Leaders are paid to prioritize. When you become a leader, your job is to start deciding what's most important and what's less important. That's it. Because what's the old adage? If everything's important, then nothing's important. Anyone ever seen everyone follow the duffel blog? Uh, it's, you know, it's a satire thing on Facebook you'll see once in a while. Anyway, I, 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 there's one that you know, highlighted, it was kind of making fun of some commander. The commander just issued his 51st most important thing, right? You ever seen that kind of thing? Well, everything's a priority. This is a priority. That's a priority. That's a priority, right? But I want you to consider for just a moment that we have been in country for a few weeks. We just finally got our vehicles. Everything's set. We're already start training now. And what is the first thing that we're choosing to do? Team Leader Academy. And that should speak, I hope that speaks volumes to you of how Sergeant Major Gibbons and I prioritize you. First thing we're going to do, then do anything first, develop you and get you a time in order to work together as an NCO core and to develop yourselves. This is your week. I've stayed completely out of this. This is your opportunity to train and develop the NCO core. It's put on by NCOs, planned by NCOs, done by NCOs. I want you to think about something, that priority. I want to go back to priority. Notice, people say all the time, well, that's my priority. Well, that's my priority. I can always tell what your priority really is by what you spend your time and money on. Think about it. I've heard all these, well, physical fitness is my priority, sir. Really? How do I know if it is? How do I know it is? Now, well, Pastor, what do you spend your what? What's your most scarce commodity? Time and money. Time is the most scarce resource we have, right? What you choose to use your time will always tell me what's really important to you. What you choose to spend your money on is what's really important to you. So you can always use this as, as a litmus test. If someone says, hey, that's my priority, think, hmm, look to see if they're spending their time and their money on it. But I want to highlight that we're spending a lot of time and money on you because that's how important that you are. Okay? Now, I want to kind of talk just about, about I, I struggle with a question I, I, I was thinking about a while ago. Notice in the U.S. Army that you have, you start out and you got your three soldiers, you know, rifleman, grenadier, machine gunner, saw gunner, and then we put someone in charge and we call them a team leader, right? Team leader. And then we put another team under them, underneath them, and then we have, they call it a squad, we call that a squad leader, yeah? And then we got three to four squads and we put them in charge under a platoon Platoon, platoon, leader. But at some point, something changes, right? All of a sudden, something changes then. Three, four platoons becomes a company leader. What do we call them? Commander. We never use leader again, because there's the company commander. Then it becomes the battalion commander, brigade commander, division commander. Does leader ever come back? Have you ever noticed that? that you have team leader, platoon, uh, squad leader, platoon leader, but it never comes back. After that, it becomes commanders. I would ask you, what is the difference between a leader and a commander? And where's the commander? You nailed it. I agree, totally agree with you. A leader is there. You're physically at the action. You're physically there. A squad leader will be there, yeah? The platoon leader will be there. But coming commander, it's getting too big, right? He's got three companies going, or three platoons going on. Can he physically be at every point of action? No, me. Can I physically be at every point of action at this point? It's impossible. It's too big of an organization, too spread out. In the brigade, right? Because so then we have this idea of, of leadership and commanding. 
And this is what I want to try to kind of talk you through here. So here's kind of what does over there. Notice what this represents is this, you have the point of action, right? Let me give an example, a wrestling example. So two wrestlers are in the arena. They're sort of wrestling, okay? So I'm, you know, here's my opponent. You imagine he's there. All right, so I'm thinking in my head. I see his left leg forward. I'm like, okay, I could go for Russian single on that left leg. I turn to my coach. Coach, should I go for a Russian single on that left leg? Coach goes, uh, yeah, go ahead. I turn around. But what's happened? I'm probably on my back, yeah. Is there any doubt that the circumstance where that left leg presented itself and I was ready to throw my shot, at the time I turned and said, Coach, what do you think? We should do this? Is anyone, what's, what happened? The situation changed. It's very different, right? Probably you just jumped on me. But is that left leg presenting itself in the same opportunity? No chance, right? But let's say I go for it anyway. I'm like, well, he said, and I do it. Do you, what's probably going to happen to me? Is there any chance that was a good shot? The circumstance, what I did was wholly inappropriate at that second. For one moment, it was very appropriate. But by the time it took me to turn and say, should I do this? And the time went from the coach to go, you know, maybe the coach is on the mat. And that time... The situation changed. What if my coach is not on the mat, though? What if the coach is in the stand? What if the coach is back in his house? And I have to hurry and send him a text message. It's like I have to relay it to somebody who sends him a text message. Should I take a left leg shot? And what if the coach is, you know, doing something else? He's out of the store, and he doesn't get to that text message for a long time. Do you see the problem of time? Minutes could go by, and I'm still waiting. Should I take this shot? Because I don't know what to do. So therefore, who is the most, where and, and who's the most important person to make the decision what is the right thing to do? Huh? The person on the mat right here at the point of action. The point of action is the optimal place to make the right decision of what needs to occur because things change rapidly. Do we do that? Are you allowed to make decisions on the right there? Really? Think about it. How many decisions are you allowed to make as a team leader? Really? Without asking. Because why? Why don't, why don't we let you do that more often? What are we worried about? Making the wrong choice. You're going to do the wrong thing. Because, here's the thing. When you're on the mat, though... You ever heard of tunnel vision? Anybody heard that term? When you're in the arena, the world becomes like this. This is how you're seeing the world. Right? As a team, as a team leader, you are making decisions based thinking like a team leader. What is right for my team? Only. But what's the problem with that? What you're doing might be wholly inappropriate for the good of the organization. But it makes sense to you. Right? Yeah, well, if I do that, then we're going to, you know, that's, that's the right thing to do, sir. Taking care of my soldiers. Da, 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 da. But your action could completely lose the battle, lose, the, you know, that, on and on and on and on. So therefore, what do commanders want to do then? What do, they, what do we want to do? It's too risky. You're too risky. So therefore, we don't want to allow you to make decisions. So then we say, I'll make the decision here, right? Because I don't trust you. So therefore, you see the outcome, though, the danger of that? There's one of my most favorite pictures. Um, it shows, it was, a, it was a lecture, and the guy showed why the French lost World War II. And he had two pictures shown. It was really cool. I always remembered it. And it showed the, the French general, right? And he's standing around a table, and he has a map here, and he's around it, and there's all these staff officers right there's the picture. See it? The next picture, he shows up, there's Rommel, the German general, and he's really dusty, and he's got goggles up here, and his face is full of dust, and he has binos right here. 
Now, what's the difference between those two pictures? One was, where was Rommel making decisions at? Yeah, he was seeing it. Why do you think he had the binos? He was looking. But the, the French general, where was he making decisions at? He had to say, oh, we should go left. Tell them to go left. Okay, and on and on and on and on. Is that time factor? And by the time they went left, it was wholly inappropriate. Where Rommel was actually there, we should go left. And the time thing was much reduced. You see that? So what I'm, what I'm talking about, in order to be a leader, for this to work, you have to understand decisions need to be made to be optimal, to be effective. For us to be able to fight outnumbered and win, they have to be made at the point of action. But you have to be able to see the bigger picture. So how do we do that? How do commanders do that? Bingo. That is what commander's intent is all about. And notice the word intent, what I intend to do. Why does I use the word intend? I'm not saying this is what you're going to do. I intend it. Yes, Sergeant. Please speak up. Brilliant. I know, I know things are going to change. I know the guy's going to turn in his wrestling match. I know he's going to you know, go this way, go that way. But I intend that you to win. Right? And I'm going to resource you to do it. I'm going to make sure you have the right training. I'm going to make sure that you know, your singlet fits or you know, all that kind of thing. You've got good water. You've got Gatorade. I'm going to make sure on and on and on and on and on. But you have to make the decision at the point of action. So I'm going to give you intent. Right? Intent usually has three, three things. You have the purpose. There's an old adage that I always liked that said, the American soldier is the biggest pain in the rear end when they don't know why they're doing something. But if they know why they're doing something, then they're fantastic, right? I mean, can we all agree with that? Nothing's worse than not knowing why you're doing something, right? So my job is to give you, why are you doing this? Purpose. Then I tell you, hey, in, I think there's some conditions that have to happen in order to work, like in a wrestling match. You have to get to the wrestling match. I gotta make sure you make weight. I gotta make sure that, you know, you, afterwards you have food. I gotta make sure that you've trained, da, 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 da. We call those key tasks or methods, what do you wanna call them? And then the end, in the end, this is what it needs to look like. In the end, after all is said, we have to have hill one, two, three. Whose job is it to decide how that occurs? Whose job is it? Yours. You're the one in the arena. You're there. You're the one that decides how that comes about. And that's what commander's intent is always meant to be. But you, in order to have the context and get out of the world of seeing it like this, in order for this to work, you have to think two levels up. Two levels up, minimum. Team leaders, you can't think like a team leader. You have to start thinking like a platoon leader. You have to see the world through their eyes. Squad leaders have to see the world through the company commander's eyes. This can only happen if you will do it that way. Platoon leaders, you have to see the world the way I see it. And I have to be able to see the world the division commander sees it. General Dent, I have to see the world through his eyes. If you're able to do that, then we will be able, you will be able to make decisions at the point of action that is entirely appropriate to make the bigger picture occur. Now, in the American Army, who here has ever done an operations order? Who's ever written one and delivered an operations order? Who's ever listened to one? Okay. We've listened to them one. Tell me if I'm wrong that most of the time that the person giving the op order is most concerned with making sure they check the block of getting everything in there. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Yeah, yeah I'll make, did I have that? Did I have that? With this idea that if I use a checklist, it will bring about victory. Our biggest problem in the U.S. Army is we focus entirely on perfection in method rather than outcome. Let me say that again. We entirely focus on perfection in method 
rather than winning. Yeah. In your operations order, you should start out with a situation. You should get your mission. And then you should get what? The two levels up. How I'm thinking about things. And that is critically important. Do you see why? If you truly understand two levels up what's going to occur, then you are empowered. That's really all you need to know. Because now you're empowered because you're going to be at the point of action and you'll see the big picture. But it's more important that you give your guys and gals what that is. So they have purpose. Remember what I said? U.S. soldiers' biggest pain in the rear end if they don't know why they're doing something. And then you spread, hey, this is the overall purpose of this operation. This is how we fit into it. Let me tell you, in combat, after combat tours and combat tours, training deployments, 21 years of service, all the very jobs I've done, one thing I am certain about, beyond dispute, I'm certain of it. The only way we can win is if we adhere to this leadership philosophy, if we do it this way. Convinced of it. And we've got to get it right. And it starts here today, understanding it. Now, if you notice in the playbook, who here brought their playbook? Notice at the very first page, I provide you Dark Rifle 6 Intent. Right there. It's the intent for my duration of command. You can do no wrong. If you are following that page, you can do no wrong. But just as what you have to take accountability for, sergeants and team leaders, it doesn't do any good if you don't read it and don't explain it to your soldiers, does it? Can mission command work if you don't even take the time to understand the intent? Can it? And you've got to be accountable. You've got to own this. You gotta own it. Because my job is to provide intent and then resource you. It's your job to provide the how. But if you don't understand intent, that is your responsibility. Is that fair? Now, notice, here's, here's what, the, what we have to do. In the mission command philosophy, this is what it is. The Army has taken this idea and given you six principles. I want you to key in on some very important words. So team leaders, notice the first thing you have to do is build cohesive teams. Think the word build. That's an active thing. You have a team, a basketball team, pretty much. Who's responsible is to build it cohesively. Your responsibility this week is figuring out tools, methods that's going to build your cohesive team. And what's it built through? Mutual trust, folks. Nothing that's why character is so important. Nothing destroys trust faster than hypocrisy. Right? Oh, that's why NCOs get that, not Joes. Or O's. They do that, NCOs. Right? Hypocrisy, I know. Nothing destroys trust quicker than that. Your inability to, not, to tell someone to do it and not be willing to do it yourself, okay? that destroys it. Lack of integrity. Lack of character destroys trust and destroys your cohesive team. Now you're no longer a team. You're four people doing their own thing and no one trusts each other. First principle. You clear on that? Second, think of the word create. You're going to create a shared understanding. Create. Just like you create a painting, just like you create a table, just like you create a possibility, it's a very active thing. You have to create it because it doesn't exist. Let me give you an example. I say Team Live Fire to you. Okay? Picture jump in your head. Do a Team Live Fire. Did a picture come in your head? Picture come in your head? Team Live Fire? Right? Do you think there's a picture in my head of a Team Live Fire? There is, right? What is the chances my picture matches yours. Your picture is formed through experience. Experiences. Your picture is formed through leaders, 
key individuals, right? It's built this picture of what a team live fire looks like. What is right? What is wrong? What is the right thing to do? What soldiers should be doing? It's this picture. You can see it, right? And if I told you, you could write a paragraph about it. Describe a team live fire. You could describe it. If I describe the team live fire, it will be even close. So how do we do that? So typically, so, so what will happen sometimes, if I don't know that, is if I walk out onto your team live fire, what am I looking for, really? Does it match my picture? And so commanders will typically get mad, right? What am I getting mad at? What am I really being mad about? Doesn't make my picture, right, doesn't match my picture. How would you know that, though? Is that fair? You would have no idea if we didn't describe and talk and create a shared understanding. Hey, this is what I think a team live fire looks like to me. Well, sir, this is what it looks like to me. Hey, this is what success should be. Yeah, I, I, well, this is what I should, oh, okay. We have a dialogue, we communicate. And then I'm pretty much, well, yep, that's what it looks like. Yep, that's what it looks like. You see what I'm saying? We have a shared picture in our head. You have to do that with your soldiers. If you say PCI to your soldier, do they have a picture in their head? Is that match your picture? And now you're mad at them. Not because they're terrorists. They just don't have the same picture. And here's the idea. If you and I will have the same picture, if you see the world the way I see it, and I can describe it effectively, so we have a shared vision, a shared picture is in our head of this cathedral we're trying to build. Then, when you're at the point of action, what decision are you probably going to make? The decision I would have made if I was there, right? Because we see it together. Notice it's created. It's not just given to you, folks. It's active. You have to fight for it. This is really freaking hard. It is incredibly hard. I've been a commander, battalion commander almost two years. Hardest thing is that principle right there, trying to create shared understanding. And as a leader, you have to do it. Next, you have to provide a, command, a clear commander's intent. That's my job to tell you, and this is the intention, and then whose job is to bring it about. Yours. You make it happen. I don't tell you how to do it, do I? I'm never supposed to tell you how. But it's my job to provide a clear commander's intent. Next, exercise discipline initiative. Notice the word exercise. 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 If you don't allow people the opportunity to exercise discipline initiative, how are they ever going to get at it? We don't like to do that, right? Because it's risky, right? Hey, soldiers, go do PMCS. Did you allow them to do dis the initiative there? You see what I'm saying? What, should, what's, what would be initiative on their part? What's their initiative? What's, what's initiative for them? Doing it properly, but what? Should you have to be telling them that? Right? It's really hard. But there's a cost for them not You see what I'm saying? There's a cost. You need, in order to win, you have to be able to trust you to take initiative. I might not be there, and you might not know what needs to happen, but you have to exercise disciplined initiative. Why is the word disciplined important? Why does it say not just exercise initiative? Why does it say disciplined initiative? Sergeant. Nailed it. If it stays with the commander's intent, and then let him go. Let you go. You're armed with commander's intent, We've built this cohesive team through mutual trust. I live my contract. My contract to you is I will never ask you to do anything I am not willing to do myself. Everything I'm ever going to tell you to do, I'd be absolutely willing to do it. And I'll demonstrate it. Character, honesty, integrity, I will absolutely be the example of that. You can trust that. We're going to build a cohesive team. I'm going to fight hard to create a shared understanding. I'm going to provide you clear commander's intent, and then I'm going to take you off leash and trust you. Because I need, in order to win, I need you at the point of action, taking initiative and making it happen, because I can't be there. We're going to use mission orders, meaning just that, commander's intent, purpose, end state, uh, key task, and end state. And I'm going to let the how to you. And last, accept prudent risk, common sense risk. I'm, hey, 
There's a, it's risky to do this. But this is absolutely the right way to do it. So as we start this week, as I turn you over to the NCO core, uh, what I want you clear, do not leave, shared vision, is you are the most important people in this organization because you're the one that makes it happen. We are prioritizing you above all else. All else is you, your development. It is you, though, must be accountable for this week to get the most out of it. And not just week ever. It is your accountability, though, to develop yourself and your team. You are now accountable to build your team. Do not leave here without the tools of how to do it. This is your opportunity to get the tools of how do you create a shared understanding with your teammates and with your higher echelons. People are not good at it. We spend way too much life trying to create a shared understanding like this. Rather than let's talk about it and let's have a shared understanding of what needs to happen. It has to be created. It is, your, it is my job and the commander's job to give you the intent and your job to make it happen. Do not leave this week without the tools if you're like, well, how do I make this happen? How do I bring it about? That's what you have. Multiple NCOs who've been team leaders before, and they will give you multiple tools and their guidance on how to make it happen. And then we have to use mission orders, which is what I just described. Commander's intent, clear guidance, and go. In fact, then we're going to accept risk. Okay? That in, the, that in a nutshell is the whole purpose of our leadership philosophy. And as I said before, I am absolutely convinced, without a doubt, that our ability to lead through this philosophy is the difference between us winning and losing.